At approximately 10.02 this morning, uh, we received information from a citizen that Mr. Minquell Limbrick was located in a residence in the 300 block of Allen Street. Uh, officers responded to the area. Uh, they began to set up a perimeter around the house. Uh, as the first responding officers were getting there, they heard what sounded like a gunshot inside the residence. They continued to set up the perimeter. A uh, SWAT team was en route and arrived on scene. They cordoned off the area. Uh, FBI hostage negotiators began trying to make contact. Uh, at the time, we did not know what had transpired inside the house. Uh, they tried for a fairly lengthy amount of time to see if anyone would respond from inside the house. Uh, SWAT team used a robot to try to open the door to gain entrance to see what was going on inside the house. When the SWAT team, SWAT team made entry, uh, they found one suspect inside who was deceased from what appeared to be a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Uh, the suspect has been positively identified as Mr. Limbrick. EMS responded and they pronounced him deceased at the scene. Uh, GBI is continuing to conduct the investigation. They are working the crime scene uh, at, the time, at this time. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Patterson from Southwest Georgia Tech uh, University, Georgia Southern. Southwest Georgia University. It's been a very, very long two days. Uh, and he's going to give you an update on uh, Officer Smith. I was in Macon this morning with uh, Jody Smith's family, uh, checking on his condition, checking on the family's condition. And uh, he, of course, continues to be in, in critical condition. But we will uh, hope and pray that his condition improves. and. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family and with our campus at this time. Thank you. I'm Vernon Keenan, Director of the Georgia Bureau of Investigation, and I would like to express my great appreciation for the community and for the law enforcement agencies in this area that work together to bring this case to closure. Now, we had 12 law enforcement agencies and local communities, county, city governments who contributed to a reward fund that led to the identification of where the location was of Mr. Hembrick. It was very important that we locate and bring him into custody. In this case, he has committed suicide. But he was a very dangerous individual. He was a convicted felon and he had a criminal history record of 32 pages. This community came together, they worked with law enforcement, and they contributed to a reward fund which gave, went forward with information which led us to where he was at. So the outcome is that there has been no other members of this community or law enforcement who have been harmed by Mr. Hembrick and is over with. This law enforcement agency and the men and women in this community can now go forward with healing. We've got one officer killed in a line of duty and the other is fighting for his life as we speak. But the perpetrator of these heinous crimes against law enforcement is not here. Thank you. Uh, I would like to conclude by thanking our community here in America's Sumter County and in the state of Georgia. Uh, we have had an unbelievable outpouring of support. Uh, the prayers that have gone out for the agency, for the families involved, uh, our thoughts and prayers continue to be with them, um, with all the families that are involved in this tragedy. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions I can. Sorry. Uh, I'll let Colonel Bryant, he's the one that actually received the call. It didn't come through 911. It was a tip that was phoned in directly to him from somebody who knew him. So I'll let him step up and tell you how that happened. We received a call this morning from a citizen that asked for um, to contact myself. I uh, reached out to him via cell phone and made contact with him, and that's when he disclosed the information about the accused being located at a residence here in America. And that's when we turned that information over to the police department. Yes, he identified and indicated that he did. He was there when he came and came into the residence. The uh, caller actually knew the gentleman and uh, was there when he came to the house. Do you know how the 
At this point, we do know who house it is. However, we're not releasing that information just yet. Was that person aiding him? No, he was not. The person actually knew of him, and one of the things that he knew about the situation, and he wanted to get away and contact law enforcement as quickly as he could, and that's what he done this and morning. that person can now be eligible for the, the reward money? The way the process goes, that person should be eligible, yes. How long were you um, Negotiations, Chief. Um, I don't have the exact time. Uh, I would say almost an hour. We were over there at least an hour. Uh, a lot of the media were there during the whole thing. Uh, we never got any response from inside the house. They just continued to try before reaching the door to try to get somebody to respond. If I could ask no one inside the home. There was no one else inside the home. If I could ask a question to you and to the GBI. Yes. Uh, you mentioned a long length of record. When you look at that record, <laughs> Also for the GBI. Do you wonder what he was even doing out on the street to begin with? I'll let the GBI take that one. Well, you just have to look at you have to look at the criminal history record. He's a career criminal, and um, uh, that's all. The record will speak for itself. I don't pass judgments on the criminal justice system. I just know that he was a convicted felon in a possession of a firearm, and he wreaked havoc on this community. Should and law enforcement out? officers performing their duty have died and are fighting for their lives. I'm not going to speak to that. The criminal justice system is what the criminal justice system is. Best in the world. It's not perfect. But in this case, we've got tragic consequences. Sir, the, uh, the original domestic violence call, was it a legitimate domestic violence yes. call? Yes. No, no. It was, it was a legitimate call. Uh, uh, the officers responded to a, a legitimate domestic violence call. Uh, on arrival, there was clear evidence that violence had taken place in, in the residence. Uh, the victim and her child were there at the time that they encountered the suspect. Uh, they were able to get her out afterward and, and get her to a safe safe place. So it, it was a legitimate call. Uh, no, no, not, not physically. Uh, I do not know at this point. Um, the GBI is still working that crime scene. Of course, he'll, he'll be taken for an autopsy, and they'll be able to determine what, if any, injuries he has other than the one that he inflicted on himself. Do you believe he's been inside that home since yesterday, or has he been home? Uh, I, we don't know yet. We still have to debrief uh, the gentleman that gave us the information. Uh, it does not appear that he has been there since yesterday. So where he was from... This morning, short before we got the call and through the night when we've been looking for him, I don't know. But officers, hopefully that will all come out in the investigation. Officers escorted an elderly woman from the neighborhood. Um, was she in the house with him? Was they keeping her clear? No, there were uh, two occupied dwellings next to the house that he was barricaded in. Uh, we evacuated the residents of both those houses just to make sure that they were safe. Uh, they were taken to a local hotel and they've since returned home. Uh, no, not at this time. The, the investigation is ongoing, um, and I'm sure the GBI will tell you if we determine that someone was intentionally harboring this man, then they will face justice. Can I ask you a question? The investigation will have to go forward. We'll, they'll have to do ballistic tests and try to determine that. There's no way to know right now. Do you have any idea? Uh, they had a relationship. I'd rather not do anything that's going to identify her or put her in any further jeopardy or any further distress. Could I ask a question to the representative from the yes, university? Yes, sir. Does Officer Jody Smith know about his friend, I can't say for certain if uh, Officer Smith knows about the condition of his friend. Um, it's uncertain right now. That's all I can say about Is that. Uh, I won't comment on the con his condition other than to say it's critical. What do you have to say about Smith? Anybody talk about his blood, why he wasn't with the I'll let Chief Tracy talk about uh, Officer Smith. I'd be glad to tell you about Officer Smart. Yeah. Yeah. What would you like to know about Officer Smith? What he was like. Um, a fine, intelligent young man. He was attending college, uh, getting married. Uh, 
uh, he'd worked with us for a while, had a good bit of experience, and just a really good guy. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of posts on social media of support. Um, it's been very clear from the beginning, from all the posts that people have, have been able to find on, on Facebook. Uh, Nick and Jody were very close friends. They've been friends since high school. They went to the police academy together. They graduated police academy together. Uh, they initially worked together. Uh, their career paths took them in different directions. Uh, their career paths brought them back into the same town of Americas. So they, they were very close to each other. Uh, when Jody heard the call and he knew that Nick was on his way, even though we already had America's Police Department officers who were coming as backup, we always dispatch, dispatch two officers to any domestic call because you never know what you're going to encounter. Uh, he heard that call over the radio and he took it upon himself to respond and back up his friend. Um, I can't say enough about them. They, they are model officers. They're both heroes in my opinion. Um, they were there together. They were there together through it. And even after the shooting, they, they were together throughout the whole ordeal. So uh, my heart goes out to their families. Uh, our job now is to support them in any way that we can to make sure that Nick is honored uh, in the days to come and that his family is taken care of. Thank you very much. Uh, I have a question. We're hearing that the American officer had a body count. Uh, he did have a body cam, and we're working through the process. Uh, it's, it's evidence. Uh, the GBI uh, will work through that. So uh, we had a discussion this morning about the process to to release that. So. Sure. Pastor Wright. Uh, the community is responsible. You heard the chief say that we came together and actually Well, certainly, um, any time that this type of uh, incident occurs, and in light of everything that happens all over the United States, I would just like to say that uh, for our community, let's um, stay uh, calm. Let the uh, let the officers do do their job, the GBI, and then we will just. Um, um, observe everything, watch everything closely, and then don't make any rash decisions or judgments about right or wrong, that we believe that everything will be done accordingly to, 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 to the law, and that justice will, will be done, and that at this point, we don't see anything that has been done that was not done correctly and by, and by the book. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much.